I'm going to talk you through I, Daniel Blake, which is the social realist film by British director Ken Loach um, that is one of your set products that you need to study for the exam. I, Daniel Blake is a British film. It's an independent film, which means that it was made on a low budget, but it's actually um, Ken Loach's highest grossing film at the box office, taking $8 million. The kind of questions that you'll get asked about I, Daniel Blake in the exam don't uh, involve you analysing the film as such, although you will need to know a few scenes in detail. What the examiners are concerned about is that you know the product context and that you've had a look into some of the social and cultural issues. As well as this, you need to look at the industry and the marketing campaign surrounding the film. We can start off by talking about the fact that this is a highly critically acclaimed film that was nominated for various awards, including BAFTA awards, that was screened at film festivals, including Palme d'Or and Cannes Film Festival, which are really famous festivals for independent film. Ken Loach himself is a director who focuses on the underrepresented parts of British culture, uh, namely those who are in poverty. And this is something that is very characteristic of his style and of Ken Loach's films, particularly looking at the north of England um, and particularly focusing on uh, the welfare state and on people who are enduring living in poverty in Britain. So really moving away from the British culture that we typically see in the media of people drinking tea um, and being highly educated, um, that kind of countryside image that Americans like to associate with British culture. Um, Ken Loach instead focuses on far more uh, difficult aspects of Britain. And I, Daniel Blake is particularly poignant as it is set in the context of austerity and it's widely considered to be a criticism of the current Tory leadership that we have in Britain. The film itself conveys a very left-wing political message. It is very critical of the changes that have been made to the welfare system, namely the working capability assessment. So in one of the scenes in the film, Daniel is on the phone uh, listening to that uh, really frustrating hold music. Uh, it has this kind of sense that nobody's listening and that nobody is really bothered about the plight of people who have somehow slipped through the loop of this working capability assessment. Now Daniel himself has been uh, medically deemed um, not fit for work, however the system dictates that he has to find a job or be looking for work even though technically he couldn't do the work, physically he couldn't do the work. So it highlights this loophole, it highlights uh, the people who suffer because of this government policy. Um, and as the audience we form this empathy with Daniel because he just seems like a nice normal person and he doesn't seem uneducated, he seems to have worked hard his whole life only to be treated unfairly by a system that is supposed to be looking after him. So he is our main protagonist and we develop a, a sense of um, loyalty to Daniel and we develop this kind of empathy. Now the other um, protagonist in the film is Katie and Katie is a single mum to two children um, and again this is highlighting a policy whereby families in Britain have had to relocate from London being too expensive to live um, up to the north of England where there are no family, friends, nobody they know um, just to be housed um, and Katie is struggling to find her way around she tries to go to the job centre but is late for her appointment and this is where Katie and Daniel meet for the first time. We all remember the scene in the job centre where the staff are overly patronising, um, where Daniel has to step in to ask 
if anybody minds if Katie goes before him in the line and the staff throw them both out. This has been heavily criticised. If you remember this particular scene, um, Tory MP Ian Duncan Smith was really angry about this and said that it wasn't fair to portray job centre staff in this manner and that Ken Loach was wrong to do so. But the audience may come to their own conclusion about whether this representation of uh, staff in, this, in a position of power over those who are seemingly powerless is actually an accurate and a fair representation. Either way, it is a fairly hard-hitting scene and it does cause the audience to uh, make links between this situation in the film and the current state of affairs in Britain as a whole. This isn't the only scene that stands out. The other one is the food bank scene and we're introduced to this food bank that's actually a real food bank. Ken Loach has not used actors, he's used the actual volunteers at the food bank. The people who are queuing up outside the food bank are people who would ordinarily be there. And this is really important, just this long line of people that Katie has to join is symbolic of the fact that there is not enough provision for some people in Britain. And when Katie actually gets inside the food bank and she's so desperate for food that she begins to eat something cold out of the can. And it is looking at what these policies have reduced her to, just to feed her children, meaning that she hasn't fed herself for a number of days. And the actor who plays Katie said that, you know, to get into the role of this character, she did herself go without food for a number of days. And she said, it does funny things to your mind. On an interview uh, on this morning, she was talking about how this is the reality for some people. So she felt that method acting was the only way to achieve a believable uh, performance in this role. Appearing on something like this morning and talking about the issues presented in this film is actually a way of indirectly marketing the film. She did slip in that it was a criticism of the Tory government and Philip Schofield on this morning had to say, well, any government actually, because they're not allowed to have any particular political affiliations on a programme like this morning. Um, so they couldn't pass any comment on the fact that this film was a criticism of the Tory party. But it would appear that the vision of Ken Loach is to expose some of the policies of the Tory government and to expose uh, some of the hardships that people in our own country are facing on a daily basis. Various other things happen during the course of this film. You have that scene where Katie's daughter Daisy wakes up in the middle of the night upset because her shoes have broken at school and other children are picking on her. And again, this would resonate with the audience as something that people face in Britain and something that shouldn't happen in a developed country. You have the scene where uh, Daniel has had enough and you know he's tried to apply online with great difficulty for jobs. He's had to uh, go through the humiliating process of going for an interview and then saying that actually he can't take the job because he's not fit to work. He's gone through the motions the whole way through the film. Then there's quite a satisfying scene where he writes, he graffitis on the wall using a spray can, um, his letter to the authorities, his angry letter, and that's where the film gets its title from. So he starts off uh, his graffiti with the phrase, I, Daniel Blake. And this phrase is really the marketing uh, tool for the whole campaign for the film. The website has links to the social media with the hashtag I, Daniel Blake. Um, there was a viral advert 
that went around with various celebrities, with Jeremy Corbyn, stating that I am Daniel Blake. In other words, seeking affiliation with people who are in this situation. And it isn't any wonder really that Jeremy Corbyn wants to become involved with this film in this way, because he is very well known for his left-wing policies and for his left-wing point of view. So there were various people who were so impacted by this film um, that they sought to align themselves with the principles and with the ideologies and messages of the film. If you remember the online reviews that we've looked at, uh, there was the one uh, by Geeky Glasses where he was talking about how this film just made him so angry about the state of Britain and about the way that some people are treated, drawing out uh, parts of the narrative that um, were particularly anger evoking and particularly unjust and particularly unfair. And online reviews actually um, are another method of indirect marketing. They're another way to allow the audience insight into uh, the film via convergence, via an active participatory audience who are talking about and getting involved in the discussion. Additionally, you had Meet the Real Daniel Blake, the man who the film was based on. So actually uh, making it a little bit more real for people to know that there was somebody in that situation. And not forgetting either that the two institutions behind the financing of this film are the British Film Institute, the BFI and the BBC. And if we link this to our knowledge of public service broadcasting, it's interesting to think how the BBC are behind a film like this with messages and values um, like this is showing. So in other words, thinking about the mantra of the BBC and thinking about the ethos of the BBC, um, we can conclude that this is supposed to be for the benefit of the viewer and the benefit of the audience. So funded by the British Film Institute and the National Lottery, it is really a British collaborative independent uh, film that supposedly was targeted at a niche audience. However, it could be argued that this film has become mainstream because of the popularity that it evoked even finding its way into Parliament, where you will remember the Scottish politician Mari Black urged um, all government members to go and watch this film. So this film was seen as a powerful tool for change and it was seen as something that the government, who are often criticised as being detached from the public, would benefit from viewing. The other reason probably why this film could be argued to be mainstream rather than niche is due to the fact that Ken Loach is a well-known, well-established director, um, having directed popular films like Cares and Sweet Sixteen and Raining Stones, all with a similar social realist message to them. So perhaps it could be argued that there was a pre-sold audience who were already uh, keen to watch I, Daniel Blake and to see what Ken Loach had to say about life in Britain at the moment. Um, lots of his films are based in previous decades with Kez even commenting on life in the 1960s in Britain. So Ken Loach is somebody who's looked at social developments and particularly focused on the underrepresented throughout the decades and has made sure that film watchers are aware of the life of those people in society who are not often portrayed in the media. Other traditional forms of marketing were also employed to promote this film. Um, there was quite an interesting poster campaign with a variety of different posters all depicting different elements of the film and perhaps appealing to a number of different audiences. Again, you should look at these posters, have a think about some of the symbolic codes, um, 
do a little bit of a semiotic analysis and draw some conclusions about which audiences these were supposed to be reaching. It's likely that the target audience for this would be a well-educated, well-informed audience who have quite a high level of media literacy and a high knowledge of government policy in order to understand some of the issues in this film. And really they are Ken Loach's target audience as well because those are the people who would be able to act on some of the things that they've seen. This film uh, was exhibited at a number of different film festivals worldwide and was released theatrically in a number of different countries including France, Spain, Japan, Brazil, but interestingly not in America. Um, people have different views about why that might be, um, but the main view is that Americans just would not understand uh, the politics of this situation and in lots of ways wouldn't understand this as a reputation of Britain. So it wouldn't be as well received in America as it would in countries who might have a similar um, view of poverty as Britain. So Ken Loach is a visionary. Um, this film was not made for the purposes of obtaining profit as such. And this sits outside of the theory of Curran and Seaton, who argue that all media um, and all collaborative projects are there for the primary purpose of making profit. This film seems to sit outside of the profit and power logic that Curran and Seaton talk about. So watch the film again, look for the elements of social realism look at the way that it has been promoted and it's been marketed, look at the impact that it's had socially and culturally and even if it's a film that you don't want to return to in the future, try to think about the messages and the values and the ideologies that it is trying to promote. Try to consider the fact that it's putting creative vision and moral messages ahead of big profit which is quite unique and quite unusual in the film industry and try to link it back to some of Ken Loach's earlier work that deals with similar issues in different decades in Britain.